I'm going to try to convert my Lab 5 code R notebook into an HTML document or an R Markdown document. So let's try to do this together. And remember, I laid out a recipe for how to do this. And the only thing missing from this recipe is to try to make sure that my code is actually reproducible. So let's actually start with that. So the first thing we're going to do is to click this little arrow next to the Run button and select the option Restart R and Run All Chunks. And this won't restart R Studio, just restarts the R session in the background. So you notice all of these things are kind of going to uh, reloading. And you'll notice that now my code is being run step by step. So this green indicates what's currently running. And at the very bottom, there is this progress bar on the bottom right that tells you you know, where it is in your overall code. So we can scroll down and try to find where it is. But it looks like it completed successfully. And the way I know that is if I, you know, I can scroll all the way down to the bottom and see that all my plots and everything showed up properly. Um, and I didn't get any errors. So that lets me know that uh, everything ran correctly. So now going back to the very top, let's convert this into an R Markdown document. The first thing I'll do is actually save this um, as a separate file. So I'm going to add the word document in front of it, just that I remind myself this is an R Markdown document. Okay. The next thing we need to do, looking back at our list, is we need to change the header output to say HTML document. So where it says HTML notebook, we change this to HTML document. Great. Um, and now let me hit save. Notice that this preview button is about to change because I just changed the output type. So when I actually go ahead and hit save, control S, that becomes a knit button because now it's an HTML document. The next thing I said is let's go ahead and specify some header options. So in order to do this, we first have to uh, move this to the next line, press tab. Um, and in order to specify header options, um, or rather in order to add like a table of contents, um, I need to add additional information that tells it how to render that HTML document. So I have to add a little colon here. Um, and then when I hit enter, it actually tabs me one further. But if you didn't uh, automatically have that happen, you have to press tab twice to get to this point. And then you'll add TOC true. And because I want a nice floating table of contents, I'll actually add TOC float true as well at the same level of tab as TOC. So right below TOC, I added TOC float. Okay. Let's go look back at our uh, recipe. And we said the next thing here, number three, was to specify code chunk options. So this first code chunk, um, we want this code to run, but to not actually show up. And in that same vein, I guess, I really don't want people to even see this word setup in my final document um, because I want this to be visible because this is going to be a report that I turn into someone. So I'm going to uh, add in my first chunk, include equals false, which says to go ahead and run this code when I knit my document, but to not output either the code or any output like all the stuff uh, below it that you see. Um, None of this package tidyverse was built under R. None of this stuff should show up in my final document or report. And again, if you forgot what um, this option was called, you could click on this little setting button here um, and say, show nothing but run my code. And that will automatically add an include equals false for you. OK. Uh, going down further. For all the other code chunks, I actually don't want to show my output. So I'm going to say echo equals false, which runs the code, um, 
doesn't show my code rather, but does show my output. So I do want to include my output in my report, just not my code, because the person who's going to be viewing this, let's say, doesn't know R, and so doesn't need to see the code. Echo equals false. Echo equals false. Um, and again, as a, you know, actually, let's just say for these ones, I don't even want them to run um, because all this gathering and spreading will take time. Um, so I'm actually going to say eval equals false, um, which means this code will show up to remind me that it's there, but um, this, this output actually won't run. So nothing will get produced. And I'm going to do the same thing here and say eval equals false. So that the code is there to remind me uh, that I have code here, but there's no output. If I wanted this code to not run and to not uh, show up, I could also select that here, show nothing and don't run my code. And that would amount to basically eval equals false and include equals false. Um, so here we're going, to, we're going to do the same thing and say echo equals false. And let's do that just, I think, one or two more times. And then we should be done with that part of this. Okay. Great. So echo equals false. And that's the last question. So let's go back up to the very top. So we've changed our header output. We've specified header options. We've specified code chunk options. Um, and we can try out some inline R code. So, you know, like I said here, um, let's say I have uh, which week, and we'll make it equal five. Um, and maybe I don't know which week I'm going to teach this next year, so I wanted to store that to a variable. Then instead of hard coding in week five, I can type in which week, and that will actually look and run this little line of code in R, which week, and it'll place the output of that here as if I had typed it in to the actual markdown. Okay. So that's not something that you're required to do. It's just something to be aware of that you can do with R markdown documents um, that uh, you know is not as relevant when you're dealing with an R notebook. So let's go ahead and save this. And now what I'm going to do is knit it. And let's see what happens. Great. So another tab popped up down here called R Markdown. It gives me a little progress report about what it's knitting and what's going on and what, the, you know, what some of those options are. And then at the very end, I get this output file name, this long string of code, and output created, which means everything worked. OK, so we can minimize that. And let's look, take a look at that output in the um, in a web browser. Now, you'll actually see that there's two HTML files. That .nb.html file is actually from when I still had that um, HTML underscore notebook in the header because it was saving that. But when I actually press knit, it produced this second file, uh, this other file, which has just an .html at the end without the .nb. And we can just confirm looking at the timestamps that this one actually happened after the, the, the R notebook one based on when it was created. So let's double click that and take a look at it. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. Um, and what you'll see here is that on the very left side, I've got each of my questions. Um, the reason they showed up like this is that I had preceded them with a hashtag. So notice here, I put a hashtag space one dot. And so any hashtags end up in the table of contents. This is a floating table of contents, which means that as I scroll down, the table of contents stays where it is, it floats. And you'll notice that as I scroll up and down, it automatically tells me which question I'm looking at because this table of contents that's floating is actually linked to my scroll window. So it knows where I am um, in the document, which is really helpful. The other really nice thing is that, let's say I want to go to the last question, I can just click on it and it'll take me there. 
So I find this really helpful. And if you're preparing a report and sharing it back with someone, um, I find this to be, uh, you know, supremely helpful in actually going over the result uh, that I found because I can click around the document without having to kind of clumsily scroll up and down. Notice uh, here that it says, uh, download the namsys 08.r data file from Canvas files under the week five folder. That five, remember, I didn't actually hard code that in. That five is actually coming from that which week variable. So if we go back here, uh, that five is not written into this. It's actually pulling that variable that I created up here um, as if I had actually you know, typed it into the markdown portion of this code. So great, we have an R Markdown document that we can now use to move forward and figure out how to make this interactive.